Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Docker to train machine learning and deep learning models and how you can use Docker to expose an endpoint using Flask. So in order to serve the deep learning or machine learning model that you have trained. So this is not an in-depth introduction video of Docker. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it and only uh, I think that's the, that's all you need as a data scientist. So if you want to, Docker is huge. If you want to go in depth, uh, then take a look at some uh, other tutorials. In this one, I'm going to focus only on training deep learning machine learning models and deploying them using Docker. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need is the data. So we need some kind of data to train something on this, just for uh, purpose of this video. So. I'm not going into details of model building in this one. So it's all about Docker, how we can use Docker. So uh, I have already created a video on sentiment classification using BERT model. So you can take a look at that video to uh, know how to train and about the data set. So the data set that I'm going to use for this video is same as that one. And that's IMDB data set of 50,000 movie reviews. So it's a very simple data set for uh, what we are uh, going to do. So uh, it has a review and a sentiment associated to the review and we are going to download this data set. So let's download this data set. So now you can see I have downloaded the data set. So here's my data set. It's called IMDB underscore data set. So let me just rename it to something uh, like uh, train.csv. And let's see if we have what, what we have here. So we have one column review, one column sentiment. And now we want to create a machine learning model um, to train on uh, this, this data set. So I, I think I have already done this bird training. So I'm going to use some code from there. So what we have done previously is we uh, we have created everything. So we have the config file, we have the data set, engine model, train, we have everything. Uh, so let me see, let, let's go to train.py and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do some copy pasting now. So uh, it's highly recommended that you go and take a look at that video and then come back to this one if, if you want to if you want to learn how I train this model, but if you don't want to learn how I train this model, then it's perfectly fine. You don't need that anyways. So I created this train.py file. I hope everything will run um, as it is. I'm also going to make some change in the um, uh, f training file here, but we le let's do that later. And what else do we have? So we have, we have model, we have engine, we have data set, we have config and we have app. So let's, uh, copy everything. Or maybe I can also, I can, I could have also copied it locally, but okay, this is what we are doing. Model.py. And, uh, we got the model and, uh, now we have, uh, engine.py so just let's take everything that I, I could have i could have actually just started from the word sentiment but i i don't know why i ended up copying this stuff <laughs> um but anyways since we are doing that okay let me let me just copy it and we can skip that part so now we have you have all the files here i'm going to give you quick walk through of these files because you should know what these files are about. So this is the train.py file. So it reads the CSV, um, the training data CSV. It fills with uh, none values. It handles a data set in, <clears throat> in some way. And then it divides it into training and validation set. Then uh, you have the BERT base uncased model and um, then it has the optimizer and scheduler and it puts model in data parallel mode. So I'm just going to remove that just for simplicity purposes. And uh, then it prints some kind of accuracy score. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change something here. 
I'm going to say use only five three thousand rows. Okay, and then we are going to see if this works. So in model.py we have defined our model. So everything here uh, we have already done previously. So uh, take a look at the bird sentiment training video if you want to know more details. So engine.py is still empty. So let's fill that up. It shouldn't have been empty. And then we have the data set in which, uh, which is generating IDs, mask, token type IDs and targets required for training BERT model. And then we have the training file. So here we are changing a few things. So now it will be called train.csv instead, uh, which is here the bird path. We don't have the bird path. So what we get, we are going to do is we are just going to download it inside the Docker container. So bird base uncased. So the thing is every time, uh, every time we train the model, we have to download the bird base uncased, which is fine for this video for right right now. I'm going to show you some stuff there. And then we have app.py, which is used for uh, deploying the model. So I'm going to remove memory cache, predict from cache, these things from here. Uh, this one, we don't, we don't need that. And everything else remains the same. And now we are going to see how we can tra train this using Docker. But before that, let's try to train it normally in our own local system. So now you can see my terminal and I'm, what I'm going to do is just going to do, uh, so, so you see I am using Python 376, so it's the same, uh, Python train.py. And let's see if it trains the model. Okay, so it seems to be downloading bird base on case. So every time um, uh, it doesn't happen every time. So locally it will happen only once. So uh, this takes few seconds. Maybe it depends on the size of the model that you're training. So if you have a large model, it's going to take a long time, but now it should start training the model. And uh, I hope it starts training the model. Let's see. Okay. So, It seems to be working. I'm going to stop it. Uh, and uh, let's, let's see if I can train it on a different GPU. So I'm using two GPUs. One of them is uh, RTX Titan RTX and another one is RTX 2080 Ti. So now I'm trying to train it on uh, 2080 Ti. So now it should not, it should not download the models. Uh, because it has already downloaded them and let's see if that works. So this works fine So the model seems to be training and my video is not getting stuck anymore uh, Because I'm training it on a different GPU now. Uh, okay, so now um, We are going to dockerize it We can also train it on CPU So if we do this it's going to train on CPU and it's going to take forever uh, yeah <laughs> because it's BERT model okay so it's not training on CPU because I have some CUDA stuff defined so what I'm going to do is I'm going to config uh, so I have this def device defined somewhere so probably it's defined in a lot of places so let's see device CUDA so I'm going to take this away from here and I'm going to say config dot device and do I have device defined anywhere else? So engine is taking a device parameter and it's not defined anywhere else. So it must be uh, in this one device uh dot device do no config dot device okay that's fine and now i will add a new argument devices cpu so it's going to train my model on cpu so when you do cuda de visible devices in uh empty string 
it's uh it seems like then uh the python program will assume that you don't have any kind of cuda devices on your machine uh so it is training very slow but it is training and that's all we need for now now to dockerize uh, your application so any kind of application you need uh, first you need to install docker <laughs> and you can do it on any machine uh, so you can uh, install docker on ubuntu windows you can install docker on os x and it's very easy we go to google and we search for docker install and then it gives you many results so you can see like um, i've clicked on install docker engine on ubuntu so you go to install docker engine and you can see like um, which platforms are supported so just just find a uh, docker engine for your platform so linux os x windows 10 uh, whatever you're using and then you can dockerize any application so um to docker dockerize so it's like it's creating a virtual container for you and um uh then anybody can use your code anywhere so they can train your models at the way you have trained so you, most of the time you hear from developers right it works on my machine but it doesn't work on anybody else's machine so that's why they made docker so that it works everywhere so uh, the first thing that we do is create a file called docker file and that's an empty text file for now and the first command in docker file is um, for for us is from so from command will take an image a docker image that has already been built so uh, to, to from docker hub so what you can do is you can go to docker hub and you can search for um, ubuntu let's say and now you have um you see like uh, you have a result for ubuntu and then inside ubuntu you can go and see the different tags so this is ubuntu latest ubuntu xenial so you have like this so what we are going to do is we are going to let's let's try use ubuntu 1804 so we have ubuntu 1804 so we click on this one and see you can see the name ubuntu colon 1804 let's copy this one so from ubuntu 1804 so now you're saying like in inside your docker container you are using ubuntu 1804 okay that's all for now what else do we need we probably need uh, another file called requirements dot txt which will have all the requirements for your machine learning or deep learning model so what what are we using we are using transformers we are using torch um we are using tqdm uh we are using are we using anything else uh we are using flask we are using we are not using joblib so i'm going to remove it and we are using pandas to read the file itself um, we are using numpy we are using scikit-learn and all of these things you have to put uh, inside requirements.txt so in the beginning it will be a little bit time consuming but then it's easier so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to check what uh, i'm using uh, which versions i'm using so you can do that very easily so let me go back to my terminal and i will do pip freeze and then i will check uh i will grep scikit learn so this will give me the version of scikit learn that i have been using locally so that's scikit learn uh, 0 to 31 okay let's see okay so this didn't work so let me copy paste it or just write it equal to equal to 0 0.3.1 so 
we got that and now similarly you have to do it for all different uh, li libraries that you have been using so let me do that so now i have all the uh, different uh, libraries that i have been using so i have flask numpy pandas torch tqdm transformers scikit-learn and these libraries are being used only for uh, this specific project and I have specified version for all of them. So when you have requirements.txt, you can just do pip install minus r requirements.txt and it's going to install everything for you from your comments. So you can see like it works uh, and uh, I have I've, I already have everything install um, on my machine so i don't need that but you need that for docker file so that's why we did it and now um ubuntu 18.04 ubuntu 18.04 uses python 3.6 if i'm not wrong but we can also check that so now we got uh, from ubuntu 18.04 and we don't have anything else so the second command that you must know is run so run command will just run any kind of command as you run on Ubuntu. Uh, so like I can do apt install uh, lib jpeg if I'm handling uh, image data, maybe I, I need this or apt install something, something else. So you, uh, at stop, um, I probably want to see uh, the resources, how the resources are being used so I can install at stop um and maybe that's it maybe i don't need anything for now uh but I, I probably need a lot of things but maybe let's say for now i don't need anything so my docker file consists of these two commands and now let's try to build a container out of this docker file and for that you will use docker build command so docker build command goes something like this you have docker build uh, then you specify the docker file so minus f docker file uh, then you specify target image name so let's say uh, my target image name is docker tutorial and you specify the location of uh, docker file so here it's in the same directory that's why i use a dot and let's run it okay unable to locate package at stop uh okay uh so probably we need to update it so let's let's try that run apt update and then apt install at stop probably that should work okay so i missed minus y so yeah and uh, then we do it again and now it runs everything so i already built it once now what we do is we can uh, go inside this docker container so let's try to do that. And for that, you need docker run command. To run it, you need a docker run command. So let me see. Okay, it's not coming. So docker run minus ti, then the name of the image, docker tutorial in our case. And then you uh, can run a command. So we will run slash bin slash bash. So we are going to uh, run bash. So now, okay, so something, okay. I'm already inside this container. So uh, docker run minus ti docker tutorial slash bin slash bash. And now we are inside this uh, container. So what do we have here? Well, we have everything. We are the root user and we installed htop. So it must be there and it is there. So you can see that nothing is running inside the container. So it's not my local machine anymore, but it's using the resources from my local machine. Uh, 
Um, so what else can we do? We started this tutorial to train something on uh, this Docker container, right? So let's see, uh, let's see what Python version does it have. Uh, so it doesn't have any Python because we didn't install any Python. So let's install Python. So one thing that you must remember that Docker works in layers. So this is this is one layer. This is another layer. So every command is a layer, and uh, that's why you should not have a lot of uh, different commands. So we will do run apt get update. Okay, let me reload this one. Um, let's let's do it in a separate command. But we can we can also no let's let's not do it in a separate command. So apt install minus y at stop and Python dev. Okay, let's see. That should install Python for us. So now we build the container again. Docker build minus f docker file uh, then minus t name of the docker container that you want to build and then a dot because it's in the same directory the docker file so now it's installing python 2.7 it seems okay i should have i should have done python 3 dev so uh let's see python 3 dev and we build the container again so it's going to take some time so now you can see it has successfully tagged docker tutorial latest and latest is the latest version of this docker container uh, so now we can run the docker run ti bin bash so it should have python now but it doesn't because it's the command is python 3 and now it has Python 369, uh, which is good enough for us. We can also probably try to install um, Conda inside this Docker container and create any kind of environment we want. And do we want to do that? We can. And so let's try doing that. Let's install Conda. Now to install Conda, you need to learn a few more things. So let's see. So first of all, we have different installers for Miniconda. So we are we are going to be using Miniconda instead of Anaconda. Uh, so this is a Linux installer. So I'm just going to copy the link. And uh, let's go back to our Docker file. And we can how how do we get this file? So we can run a command and call wget and then we have the location of the file but that's not it there there's there's a few more things that you have to add uh to 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 install miniconda and those things include so you have to learn a few more things in docker um so we get the file that is perfectly fine and now we have to um run the command sh uh, and then the file name so let's try doing that. so we will create a, a kind of new folder mkdir and we are always working in root so root slash uh, dot conda and in this folder we will install uh, a mini conda so forgot this and and um, a search and then the file name and then minus B where minus B is just the silent install so it doesn't offer any kind of uh, path modifications to your bash RC file and if you don't know about bash RC now you have to Google bash RC so rm minus uh, f uh, because we have already installed it now so we don't need this anymore and one thing you have to remember uh, you have to create a conda environment so you can do conda create minus y so which passes yes minus n new environment and let's call 
uh, this environment ml and python equal to 3.7 <laughs> not not 2.7 3.7 and now it will create me a python environment so let's see if this works so we will build the container again so everything will be done. so wget is not found so the thing is you have to install wget using apt install and now um, we will try it again so wget is not found so we didn't save it okay I think it is using cache and it shouldn't do that yeah, it's because I did not I did, did not save the file it seems so now it seems to be working so it's installing some stuff and now we need to wait a little bit again so it doesn't take much time so it finished and it gave you an error conda not found it's because you have to set the conda path in uh, the path variables in the environment and for that you have to learn two new commands so env uh, then you specify path equal to so it, here you have uh, slash root slash miniconda3 because that's where it installs miniconda3 and slash bin and now you add this to your path but, okay and you do the same thing with arc argument uh, yeah arc command now we will see what env and arg and when arc command they mean so you look at the documentation of docker it's quite extensive you have everything that you need uh, to learn from here so to make new software easy to run you can use the env to update the path environment variables in the software your container installs so you install something new and you need to update the path variable so you can also do it like this or the way i have done it it's the same and now let's search for arc uh command so let, let's find that and uh, after a little bit of googling so we see that arg is only available during the build of docker image not after the image is created and containers are started from it you can use arg values to send uh, to set env values to work around that and env values are available to the container but also run style commands during the docker build starting with the line where they're introduced so that's the difference between arg and env and we uh, will be using both and now we create the container again and see what happens let's see okay so we have probably made a mistake somewhere uh slash root slash miniconda bin uh and uh, to path and and path and arg Article two. Okay, so this one looks fine. Let me save it again. Let's try the same thing without uh, with no cache and see what happens. No cache. Then it has to build everything and app not found. So there is something wrong. I need to take a look at that. And it seems seems like uh, it's a major blunder that I've done. So I didn't include Docker, so it like changed everything from my path variable and now it should work. Okay, so now it seems to be working fine. So it's installing stuff uh, and now we wait a little bit and see what happens in the end. As you can see now, it seems to be creating the environment, the Conda environment, which was failing. So it's creating uh, Python 3.7.7 environment now so let's wait for it to get done and there we go we have the docker uh, created now so I will just do bin bash again go inside the docker container and I have the conda command so if I do Python I'm getting Python 3.8.3 which comes from uh, mini conda but if I do conda activate ml 
so it tells me it gives me an error so what you can do is instead of doing conda activate you can do source activate ml and it takes me to the ml environment it's so cool and now here i have python 3.7 now I can do everything that I have been doing uh, till now like uh, on my local machine. So what we are going to do next is run another command and that's called source activate um, source activate uh, ml and then uh, pip install minus r requirements dot txt so this is going to install everything for me but before that we probably need to do something more uh, so let's copy our code and to copy our code from our local machine to our docker environment we use the copy command so copy dot so it will copy everything that we have uh, locally here to a folder and let's call that folder src slash okay i hope i don't need to create that folder and i hope it works uh, so we will add cd src one more command ampersand ampersand uh, source activate so let's take it to new line and let's take this to new line too so now uh, it should install on all the requirements after activating the ML environment. So let's try and I can remove no cache because I don't really need it. So some of the steps are already cached and see it ran very fast. Okay. So one more thing missing here is uh, you cannot you cannot just use it like this. So uh, you have to uh, use um, slash bin slash sh and then you need to install it. So I can do slash bin or bash and then minus C and then I have all this stuff. Let's see. Um, the command returned the non-zero status. Okay, uh, so I need to see what's happening here. Let's try to run it. So I think it's because I have minus V instead of <laughs> minus C. So let's see okay now it's working so uh it has copied the requirements.txt file and now it's installing everything that is inside my requirements.txt file so now we wait for it to finish and it's done so now we go back to this container run the bin bash command and we must have a src folder and we do have a src folder um okay now here we see we have everything we have we even have the data file so it's not usually advisable to put the data file in the docker container but we have everything here so now if i run python 3.8 and i will do source activate ml so I'm in this machine learning environment now and I can just do python train dot pi and let's see what happens. So uh, it's downloading like previously and uh, then it should it should just start training and let, let's wait for this to finish and see if it starts training. It seems to be training fine. So training has started and uh, it will finish after one hour <laughs> so because we have been training it on cpu so now uh, you have created a docker container and you're able to train your model but you can also do it like uh, so something like this so one thing you need to remember about docker container is once you exit all files are gone 
they don't save the files. So what you can do is you can do bin bash minus C again. And here you can write source activate ML uh, ampersand ampersand CD SRC and then again Python train dot by and it should just run your command that you ran well uh, you went to the docker container and then you ran the command so instead of doing that you can just run it so this command is all you need now to train your machine learning model but there is one problem it's not going to save the model because first of all it's do downloading is fine but it's not going to save the model uh, because once you exit the container everything is gone so let me stop this and uh, let's go back and see what else can we do we will uh, go one level up and here i will create a new folder so docker data so i've created a new folder called docker data and now uh, let me go back to docker tutorial uh, and back to our file so where we have been uh, uh, where we have like the config and stuff so where to save the model so let's say we want to save the model in slash root slash docker data okay uh, where is the training file training file is also in the same folder let's say it's in the same folder and we will move the training file from here so mv train.csv to dot dot slash docker data so now my training file is gone from here it doesn't exist anymore and now uh since we changed the code we have to build the docker container again I'm just going to reduce it to 64 because it's faster and uh, everything else is the same. It's still training on CPU. It's still downloading the model. So instead of it downloading the model, you can also change this uh, bird path to slash root slash Docker data and you can have your bird base uncased model there. But we haven't done that. So let it download the data. It doesn't take much time. It's not good for the servers, but it's okay for this tutorial uh, and now since we have uh, changed the code we build a docker container again so now everything will run again and it's going to install the requirements that's going to take a while okay it's done now we have uh, rebuilt our uh, docker container and let's see uh, what we have okay so this is uh, not this one but now we can uh, run uh, the previous code again uh, sorry the previous line of uh, command again so let me see okay so this was our command to run the model right and uh, before that we have this command so here we will add something new we will add a new uh, argument minus v and what this will do is here we specify home work uh, slash home slash abhishek uh, workspace or maybe i can just do dot slash uh, docker data and then i have uh, this pointing to docker data in the container so this is my local path and this is the path that i want this um folder to be mounted on so let's see it doesn't work invalid mount uh docker data slash or maybe it doesn't like my relative paths okay so okay so yeah it says that the path must be absolute okay slash home Or maybe I can just do like this okay now it's much easier for me to see what's happening um, oh my god I hate this it doesn't paste <laughs> so slash home shake workspace 
workspace. Uh, does it need slash root? Okay. So there we are. Uh, so minus V is mounting a volume from your local machine to your Docker container. And now when I go here, uh, inside this, I must have a folder called Docker data, which I don't have uh, CD slash root Docker data here. So I got this container um, and inside this, I have Docker data. And when I look at it, I have train.csv. So if I'm if I'm modifying train.csv here, it will also be modified on my local machine. So everything I do inside this Docker container. So like, let's do touch, uh, create a new file, new file dot text. And now I have a new file inside the container and I will have the new file uh, in my local machine too. So you see new file.txt, which was created from inside the container. So you can actually also mount your uh, code folder to the Docker container and then do all the development inside without having to build um, the container again and again. So now we can just run the previous command. And okay, let me just clear this. Okay. And our previous command was this one where we activate the ML environment and we then we train the model. So it says slash root docker data slash train dot CSV does not exist. So probably we made some, okay. Yeah, it, we made some mistake. We didn't mount the volume, <laughs> right? Okay. So this was our command minus C and then here we do uh cdsrc ampersand ampersand source activate ml and two ampersands and python train dot by and now it should train the model but it's still going to download everything because we didn't specify we, di we didn't pre-download them so we can we can also pre-download all the pre-trained models that we want to use and put them inside this docker data folder and mount it and you can also mount multiple volumes like this so everything else remains the same and now it will start training a model and it will also save the model in the docker uh in this folder so my model will be saved in this folder that i have Okay, so now it's going a little bit faster because we have uh, reduced the size of uh, uh, the max length of the sentences that we will be training on. And now we, we can stop it. Let's stop it because it's training everything on CPUs. So let's change the device to CUDA. And now when we change the device to CUDA, first of all, we can just go and try to take a look uh, inside the container. So just go bin bash and uh, let me run this command and VDSMI to see what happens. We don't have anything. And that's a major problem because we do have GPUs on the local system, but it doesn't recognize in the, inside the container. And it also doesn't have CUDA or QDNN available. So to uh, fix this problem, we need to install NVIDIA Docker Runtime. So you Google NVIDIA Docker Runtime and you, you will come across uh, NVIDIA Docker GitHub repository. Go, go there. And uh, unfortunately, this is only available for, uh, it's not available for Windows. So I'm sorry, Windows users. But you know, you don't use Docker to train the models. You can train your model anywhere you want. And then let's take the binary file and uh, the weights file. And then you use Docker to actually deploy your model. So if you're on Ubuntu, you can uh, install uh, the runtime, the NVIDIA runtime using these commands. But that also means yeah, like you have to install the drivers on your own. So this is only the runtime and you only need to do these steps just once.
<coughs> then it's always going to be available so now uh, what we do is uh, on my local machine we have nvidia gpu right and uh, this is the docker run command and i will add minus minus gpu gpus one and let's see i already have the uh, nvidia runtime and now it's detecting a gpu and let's see gpus two uh, maybe i just want to use the second gpu so if i do this CUDA visible devices equal to one and then I run this command NVIDIA SMI and here okay I'm still getting Titan RTX so maybe oh yeah okay because this this won't work like this okay uh, never mind maybe 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 I should try uh, something else instead of gpus one maybe i can try gpus two then i have two gpus so i i got both the gpus here and then i can specify which gpu i want to use and just use that one so you see like uh, there's no process running but uh, some some memory is being used because that's being used by my local machine and you can also do gpus all then it's going to use all your gpus but we have only i have only two gpus on my machine so now i go back and uh, i've already changed it to cuda so now when i train using the same command uh okay this one and it should uh train it on gpus so i just need to add minus minus gpus one let's use one gpu that i have well out of two um so it's going to use my gpu the titan rtx gpu so my video is going to be stuck so you can see like uh, now it has started training uh and my model path is also slash root docker data model dot bin so it's going to save the model there so i'm just going to wait for some time to see if it's saving the model or not so i'm going to wait for one epoch maybe i can reduce the number of samples and uh, it's going to be much faster uh, so uh, but we need to build the docker container again so let's try to avoid that shall we uh, so let's try that uh, so we will uh, we will change uh, train.py and set the number of rows to 600 just because it's fast it's going to be faster and uh, now here i will specify i will change the command a bit so instead of going to cdsrc is going to cd uh, slash root slash code and inside that it's activating the environment and running it and we need to have one more uh, mount minus v uh, slash home absolute path so i have to type a lot slash docker tutorial and that's this one goes to uh, slash root slash code so now what i've done is i've not changed anything in my con container the container still has the old code but uh, i'm mounting a new volume uh, which is this folder that i'm working on the docker tutorial and mounting into slash root slash code then i'm going to slash root slash code and activating the environment and running python train.py and let's see if this works okay so this is working so this is one of the tricks that you can use uh, to uh, to cr uh, like you have already created the container once you don't need to create the container again and again and you can just make changes in the code and those changes will be reflected instantly inside the docker container so this is this is how you can use it for 
development purposes now we wait for we wait for a few minutes uh, let it finish one epoch so that I can show you how you can deploy using this uh, okay so maybe I forgot GPUs or uh, is it apex complaining okay let me check this thing so yeah yeah I mean this is a genuine error I I didn't get get it uh, before so uh, it, it's happening because you don't have CUDA and QDNN installed. So now you need to install CUDA and QDNN inside your uh, Docker container. And how to do that? You'd, let's go back to our Docker Hub and search for NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA slash CUDA. So you need CUDA and QDNN uh, in order to train um, a deep learning model. So we will search for Ubuntu and here you have 10.2 runtime um, 1804 and let's see uh, CUDA 10.2 uh, CUDA QDNN 8 you also have QDNN 8 and you also have CUDA 10.2 uh, QDNN 7 so let's use that one so let's copy this and now you have to change the uh recreate the docker container so instead of doing from ubuntu 18.04 so first of all let's hide this one so it's just hash you can use hash to comment inside the docker file and we install uh we use this container as the this image as the base image and then obviously we need to recreate the container so let me exit this one so we run docker build again uh, because we changed something in the docker file and uh, okay so now it's installing some packages again it's going to take a few minutes so this is done and now we can we can try to run our training command again and see uh, if that works so now we run uh, the same code and instead of train.py here we have app.py app.py so uh, now it's going to download the pre-trained model again obviously you don't need that you can save it locally and you can also mount it using the minus v parameter and you see like I have GPUs equal to uh, GPUs one this parameter and uh, if I go back to code you can see in the config file the device is CUDA everything everything is here so you don't need to care about anything else uh, so it's now downloading and after it finishes download it should start the flask API so so far so good we need to wait okay so now it has started the flask api on uh, all uh, hosts on this uh, uh, network so let me just copy this thing and open it in a, a new tab and you can see when i when i try to open that link it doesn't open because uh, it doesn't exist first of all because the port is inside your docker container so let's bring it outside and to do that we just need to ch change a few one parameter we just need to add a new parameter to this command uh, so, so these commands are uh, they might look huge but they are not really huge so uh, the argument is minus p and then you can do uh, something like maybe I want from my local machine I want 7000 port 7000 going to 9999 which is uh, originally there in app.py uh, so it's going to load everything and then it's going to start on the same port 9999 but I will be accessing it on port 7000 and when I go there I have not found so my API is working fine so it gives me something uh, so it doesn't uh, it's not unable to connect anymore but uh, it gives me that uh, uh, this URL was not found 
So instead of accessing it from a browser, let's just uh, try to access it from uh, another terminal. Um, so we have this command and it's running on port 7000. And it's the same old API that we have already seen uh, in previous videos. Okay, so now you see I'm getting a response. I, 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 I don't care if it's positive, negative or whatever. And then what you can do is you can change your device to CPU and uh, you can remove the volume. So the volume that uh, you have mounted here and you can just give the model to someone and the code uh, inside this Docker container to someone and they can just run it on their own. You can also upload your model, uh, your Docker container to Docker Hub so they don't have to create the uh, container again and again. So it's always going to be there. All your code is going to be there. And uh, uh, like as far as this command is concerned, if if it seems huge, just save it in a bash script or create a make file out of it. And that's very useful. Make build, make run to build your container, Make use make build or to run your container, use make run make train these kind of things and that makes your life much easier so this is it for today's video i've shown you how you can use how you can like uh, use docker and uh, to, to train your model and for a data scientist you don't need to learn a lot of things in docker uh, but it's always good to learn something new and um, you can you can use ubuntu 18.04 you can use Alpine Linux, you can use Python Slim. There's so many variations available. Just go to Docker Hub and see. And this is it for today's video. If you liked it, do click on the like button and do subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. And thanks a lot. And tell me in comments how was it and what you want to learn further. Thanks. Bye.